in Pilate's judgment hall. Now, Jesus stands a prisoner in Pilate's judgment hall. Insults are hurled at him in abusive tones and false charges are presented against him. But he answers not a word. His whole bearing gives evidence of conscious innocence. He stands unmoved by the fury of the waves that beat around him. It is as if a heavy surge of wrath rising higher and higher like the waves of the angry sea broke around him but did not touch him. He stood in silence. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep is silent before its shears, he did not open his mouth. Pilate looked at Jesus bearing insult and mockery without retaliation. I will chastise him and release him, said Pilate. So Jesus was taken, faint, weary, and covered with wounds, and was flogged with a lead tip whip in the sight of the multitude. Then the soldiers took him into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They dressed him in a purple robe and made a crown of long sharp thorns and put it on his head. They then saluted him yelling, Hail Jesus King of the Jews! They spit on him, and beat him on the head with a stick, forcing the thorns into his temples, and sending blood dripping down his face and beard. Wonder, O heaven, and be astonished, O earth, behold the oppressors and the oppressed. Pilate sent for Barabbas to be brought into the courts. He then presented the two prisoners side by side, and pointing to the Savior he said, in a solemn voice, Behold the man, I bring him forth that you may know that I find no fault in him. There stood the Son of God wearing the robe of mockery and the crown of thorns. Stripped to his waist, his back showed the long cruel stripes from which blood freely flowed. His face stained with blood, showed the marks of exhaustion and pain. As the mad crowd roared louder and louder, away with him crucify him. Pilate was filled with amazement, and moved with sympathy for the suffering prisoner, who condemned and scourged with bleeding brow and lacerated back, still had the bearing of a king. But anxious to please the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas and handed Jesus over to the soldiers to be crucified. From prison and trial, they led him away to his death, and no one among the people realized that he was dying for their sins, that he was suffering their punishment. Since the Passover supper with his disciples, Jesus had taken neither food nor drink. He had agonized in the Garden of Gethsemane in conflict with satanic forces. He had endured the anguish of betrayal. He had seen his disciples forsake him and flee. He had been taken to Annas, to Caiaphas and then to Pilate. From insult to renewed insult, from mockery to mockery, two times tortured by scourge. All that night, there had been scene after scene of a character to try the soul of man to the maximum. Christ did nor fail, every word he spoke, was to glorify God. But after the second scourging, the cross that was prepared for Barabbas was placed upon his bruised and bleeding shoulders his human nature could bear no more, and he fell fainting to the ground. The crowd that followed the Savior saw his weak and staggering steps but felt no compassion. Again the cross was placed upon him, and again he fell fainting to the ground. The soldiers saw that it was impossible for Jesus to carry the heavy cross but were puzzled to find anyone to bear the humiliating load. Just then a stranger, Simon of Cyrene, coming in from the country, he meets the crowd. He hears the taunt of the obscene mob. He hears the words scornfully repeated, make way for the king of the Jews. He stopped in astonishment at the scene, and as he expressed his compassion, they arrested him and placed the cross upon his shoulders. The bearing of the cross to Calvary was a blessing to Simon, and he was ever after grateful for its providence. It led him to take the cross of Christ by choice and ever after stand beneath its load.